4.1 understanding decimals just go over some basics and a quick introduction to decimals but um, in the past most students have liked module 4 because it's not fractions for the most part I should say we're gonna get into some fractions uh, and its relationship and the fractions relations to decimals but uh, a lot of students like this module a little bit more than module 3 just because it's not all about fractions so with decimals uh, we need to understand some of the place values first now uh, this black line right here uh, this one that is where the decimal would be in this case so everything to the left of the decimal is what we would call a whole value and everything to the right is where we get fractional or part partial values of numbers all right now the nice thing about uh, the fractions is they tell us uh, not only the value of whatever number we're looking at but also what it would be as a fraction which again we'll get into here in a minute but uh, when we when you write these out uh, a lot of students like to use commas in these every third position um, I, I don't remember if canvas cared or not whether you use the commas but um, the commas just kind of separate the classification of these values right like these first three to the left of the decimal are all just the basic uh, names for the three values ones tens hundreds so everything after that is still one ten hundreds but it's of that classification so this is thousands 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 right one thousands ten thousands hundred thousands next is in millions one million ten million hundred million and then billions and trillions and so forth and then fractions fractions though it's not necessarily every third one it's I mean you could say that it is but we got tenths hundreds thousandths but the thousandths are just one thousandths now we're gonna be eventually writing these in words for this section and the only real difference between a hundred and a hundredth is this th at the end there which is true for all of the fractional parts or the decimal values in here so I kind of emphasize it with the th thing and we need to emphasize it otherwise sometimes we may hear hundredths and well you know if your hearing's going bad like mine is I may hear hundreds but you did actually say hundredths okay and that's because they are so similar to to each other but once we start writing them out then it becomes a little bit more clear so on this one determine the place value of the following numbers for 482,547 and 3,967 I believe that's hundred thousandths uh, so actually let's let's take that chart again so yeah on this one uh, it wants the place value of this of the two now hopefully there's not more than one two when it gives you this on the homework so um, it's not asking for more than one place value but the, the two on this one is just right here now that's not even a decimal part and that's okay but we can see if the decimal is here this is one two three four place values to the left of the decimal and just identifying each of those that's ones tens hundreds thousands so the two is in the thousands place and again that's not a th thousands it's just a regular thousand but next up we got that six which is right here now this is in the decimal place value so it's a fractional value which means we need the th uh, in the word for this so uh, let's look at how many place values one two three four to the right of the decimal now again that does not mean it's thousandths uh, in this case again I would just go through each place value just to start out until we get used to it 
to see what exactly the place value is, right? So the first place value to the right of the decimal is tenths. Sorry, I almost said that wrong. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and then the six is in the ten thousandths. So we'll write that in, ten thousandths. And then we have the zero, which is just one place value to the right of the decimal. And that would be, well, one place value to the right is the tenths. Tenths. And again, I, I just want to make sure if, it's, if it is a decimal value, we need to include the th part of that, okay? All right, so these place values will help us to write the decimals in words. Just remember, because it's a lot of times we get confused, just be almost out of repetition, or uh, maybe it was, and I, I am picking on elementary teachers here, but back in elementary when we, when we even spoke these words out, sometimes we used and improperly. Well, the and is the decimal, okay? So when you declare the decimal, you're using the word and. A lot of the times in the past, they used the separation of the place values or the classification of these place values, every third one with an and, right? Like it'd be 10,000, one, one, uh, well, 17,526. So just in terms of strictly mathematics, and I'm not saying that you can't do it in your everyday life, but when you're actually writing the words for this class, you can't, you can't use the word and that way. Okay, so, and you, again, it's, it's all about communication. If people understand what you're saying, that's fine. But in this class, since it is a math class, we want to go strictly to the math stuff so when you're using that decimal, that is where you declare the and. We don't separate thousands and millions with an and, okay? Write this number in words. All right, so uh, with, the de with the decimals, the only place value we're going to actually declare in th in with the th thing, right, is the place value farthest to the right. So the first thing I would do on this problem is I would identify the 8, right? Or the place value of the 8 for this one. And again, that's because the 8 is farthest to the right in this number. Okay, so what is the place value of that 8? Well, if I look at my chart here, we got tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's three place values to the right of the decimal, right? We got the decimal, 1, 2, three place value. So that's thousandths. So whatever number I get for the decimal, it's going to be in that place value thousandths. Okay. Well, the next question would be, well, how many thousandths do we have? Well, then I would look at this number without the decimal, which is 48, right? So that tells me how many thousandths there are. And now I'm ready to write the number. Now, in this case, if if you were to say, well, you got a zero in the ones place value, so you could write it zero and 48 thousandths, but I wouldn't do that, okay? We don't really need to declare a zero in the ones place value since we're just looking at this decimal number. So this one, let me see if I can make that bigger. So what do we have? We got 48. 48, and um, we do need to hyphenate those uh, double-digit type numbers. So 48 um, would be double-digit, even even if it if there is a, like a hundreds or something beyond that, okay? So 48, uh, again, we're, we're hyphenating that, 48, and then I declare the place value, which is the, in the thousandths, thousandths, like this. Bam, that's it. Now, I, I will say as well, if you if you type 40 like this, 40, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, huge on spelling 
with this 40 business, okay? So if, if you wrote 40 like that, I, I believe because it, it is auto-correcting on my iPad here, but if, if you had misspelled it like that, I wouldn't really mind. I, I think the homework made, though, so be careful. All right, so let's write this decimal as a number. So 1,080... Uh, I'm sorry, 1,085 and 97 thousandths. So, again, I'm just going to point this out with the hyphenation, right? So, it's 85. That's That would be the two-digit number on that. With the, uh, the ones place value is never hyphenated if it's alone like the 1,000 is. But then we got 97. Again, that would be considered a two-digit number or two-digit part of this, okay? So... Uh, 1,080, what does that look like? So let's, so I, I said that wrong again, 1,085. So I got in the 1,000s place one, I got 1,000. Now the 85, the 80 is the tens place, so that's the eight right there. And the five would be ones, how many ones I have, One, 1,085. Now, so far, I haven't filled in a, play, a number into the hundreds value, place value. So uh, I wouldn't leave that blank, of course. We need some number to hold its place value, but there, there wasn't any hundreds declared in this number. So we need to show a zero there to hold that place value, but not actually have any value itself. Okay, so I got 1,085 so far. Then we have the decimal, right? Because that's that black line represents where the decimal goes. Now, 97 thousandths. So that puts us in this place value here. In the thousandths, thousandths. And how many thousandths are there? There's 97. So I, I can write the 97 like this. So the 9 now is in the hundredths place value. The 7 which would be our number farthest to the right, and this number is in the thousandth place value. And again, just, just like with the hundreds on the last one, I'm in the tenths, and there is I haven't put a value in there yet, but we do need a value in the tenths place value to signify that, that we're not actually having any value in the tenths. So uh, what number would that be? It's still zero. So this would be 1,085 and, right, that's the and is where that uh, decimal goes, and 97 thousandths. All right, so ordering these numbers from smallest to largest. So uh, there's, there's lots of different ways you guys can do this. Uh, again, the smallest numbers on a number line would be farthest to the left. And the biggest numbers would be farther to the right. So all negative numbers are to the left of zero. That's where I would start. All right. So I, I'm starting with the negatives, right? Now, even before I start with the negatives, and I'm, I'm just looking at this negative 43. This would be 43 hundredths. And then we got negative 4 hundredths. Now, remember, if... If a negative is, I guess we could call it a bigger negative, then it's farther to the left on that number line. Now, something, this is the way that I really look at it, though, is I would just look at these. They're both in the same place value, okay? 43 hundredths and four hundredths. So if I were to look at this, I don't really need the decimal anymore because they are in the same place values. I'm comparing the same thing. I just need to know how much of them there are. Okay, so I would really look at this as negative 43 and also negative 4. Well, which of these is more negative? Well, the negative 43 is, which came from the negative 0 0.43 or 40, negative 43 hundredths. And then the only other negative we have is the negative 4 hundredths. So once we get these decimals in the same place values, we can, comp we can compare them straight across. 
uh, without any decimals, okay? So like this one, it was 43 hundredths and four hundredths, both are negative. Uh, and then I just looked at them without the decimals, negative 43 and negative four. Now it's not, not everyone needs that, but when I think about these, I, I usually think about them in those terms. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the hundredths as well, or hundredths. I'm sorry, this, this is the thousandths. I was just thinking three place values. So I'm looking only at the positive values, which are these four numbers. And uh, all of them have three place values, right? Yeah, I don't see any that only have two, which is, I guess it's, it happens from time to time. So in other words, this first number, this would be eight thousandths. This one is 407 thousandths. This one is 43 thousandths. And this one here is three thousandths, right? So again, I would just look at these as regular numbers. We got eight, 407, 43, and three. And if I list these from least to greatest, just with the decimals, then I will have this right. Again, that's because all four are already in the same place value. Now, if they weren't, Let's say that there was another number over here, like 0 0.09. Oh, there we go. 0 0.9 like this one. So this would be 9 hundredths. I would just tack on a 0 to the right of that and make it in the thousandths. Okay, so that would be considered 90 thousandths. Um, if, if we needed to. Okay, we don't need to for this one because they're all in the same place value, which is extraordinarily convenient. So what's my lowest number with the positives? That'd be three, which comes from the three thousandths. And the next one is the eight, which comes from the eight thousandths. Maybe I should have wrote these smaller. Well, then the next one, we got 43 and 407. Well, 43 is obviously smaller than 407, or it's farther to the left on the number line, and that came from 43 thousandths. I'm going to need the space on this one. And then, finally, our biggest number, the only one that's left, uh, 407 thousandths. So this is our list of these same values, whoops, from least to greatest. All right, so moving into less than, greater than, or equal to stuff, just comparing two values, I would, I would utilize the same method myself. So this one is 3,705 ten thousandths, and this one is 30,705 hundred thousandths. So they don't, they don't have the same number of place values, so this... Uh, 3,705 ten thousandths, I would make 37,050 hundred thousandths. And again, that allows me to compare this directly with this 30,705 hundred thousandths. Well, now that I have these in the same place values, or I'm comparing them with the same place values, I would write them out as just regular numbers, 37,000 50 and also 30,705 like this well if this if these were dollars i would want $37,000 a lot more than $30,000 and uh, just to reemphasize this stuff which i believe we talked in about in module 1 is since these both have the same number of numbers or digits I would say, well, I got the same number farthest to the left, which is the ten thousands place value, because I've gotten rid of the decimal, right? And then the second number is the thousands, and that's where the numbers are different. So you could look at only the seven and the zero and say, well, seven is bigger than zero now, because that is where the, that's the first place value that they are different. 
Therefore, this number is bigger. 3,705 ten thousandths. So I, I guess that's a couple of different ways to look at it, which we've discussed before. All right, rounding. Rounding is great, and there are many rhymes for rounding. So if you're like, yeah, I, I really struggle with memorizing rounding, you can go on YouTube and you can find all different types of musical numbers about rounding. Uh, so, you know, if you're like, uh, I think that like, you can YouTube it and you can find anything out there. And no, I am not going to sing for you guys. Not just because it's too early, but because I want you guys to come to class often, okay? So, this would be one of the rhymes that's out there. Underline the digit. Look next door. If it's five or higher, add one more. If it's four or lower, just ignore. Now, this is, maybe it's oversim oversimplified. However, now, now, when it says, if it's four or lower, just ignore, uh, that's okay. Just remember that all the other values to the right of the place value that you're rounding to, they, we pretty much eliminate them. You could say, well, we replace them with zeros, which is fine. But uh, once we start getting zeros that repeat, we don't actually end up showing those. So a number like this one, round to the nearest ten thousandths. So I, I'm not I'm not big with that rhyming stuff. If if I can remember it right, we underline the numbers. And then this one said ten thousandths. Yeah, ten thousandths, right? So underline the number or the place value in this case, ten thousandths. So that's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So that's this specific two right here. Underline the number. Look next door, that's the nine. Uh, if it's five or higher, add one more. Oh, that's very good. Okay, so nine is five or higher. So the two, the ten, uh, ten thousandths place value, I need to add one more. Well, two plus one is three. So then I have 0 0.2893. And again, the, the rest of these values, we, we just kind of, we don't need to worry about those because it's now rounded. Now, I, I like this add one business, okay? And I like to show it as add one because if that were a nine and I needed to add one, what would it do? It, it, will, it would increase the next place value as well, okay? So, we look to the right. It was five or higher. And so we... Added one. I forget the rhyme already. So this ends up, after being rounded, 2,893 ten thousandths. Now, another way to look at this, you guys, is let's just look at the number here. Since we're looking at ten thousandths, we only really have two options, right? We got 2,893 ten thousandths, or the other possibility could have been this, uh, and this one would have been incorrect, of course, we've established that, but it would have been 2,892 ten thousandths. And when we round, what we're really asking is this number, the, what is that, 289,297 millionths. What, what number is that one close to, closer to? Is it closer to this 2,893 ten thousandths, or is it closer to 2,892 ten thousandths? And of course, with the, with the work that we've shown already, we know that it's closer to this one. So I, I don't know if that helps, but it is, uh, hopefully that clarifies why the answer is this one when we're looking at rounding. Uh, we're just looking at which of the two values it is closer to. And you should, you, you'll only ever have two options to choose from. All right, write this number as a fraction in lowest terms. Okay, so this is where the, the wording becomes, uh, well, I guess writing mountain words is pretty important. But this is very important to help us understand how to change decimals into fractions. So on this one, we have, this would be written as 65 what is that? Uh, ten thousandths. Yeah. 
65 ten thousandths, right? Because this is, the five is one, two, three, four place values to the right. And just looking at the chart, one, two, three, four place values to the right is the ten thousandths. So whatever this is, it's in ten thousandths, okay? Uh, well, how many ten thousandths are there? There's 65 of them. So that actually ends up being the fraction, right? Like, well, let, I apologize. I'll go ahead and write this out in words. This would be 65 ten thousandths, like this. Well, that means that as a fraction, uh, the numerator is whatever value you have, right? Like this one is 65 of a place value, which is ten thousandths. So I would write the 65 as my numerator. And the denominator is whatever the place value of the number farthest to the right is, which in this case, the 5, like we've shown, is in the 10 thousandths place value. So I would just write 10,000 as my denominator. Well, now that I have this, we need to simplify it, right? And we can see both of these are divisible by 5 because they end in either 5 or 0. So we'll divide these by 5, and what do we get? 13... Uh, over 2,000. Yeah, and we can't simplify it from there. Uh, so this looks like it'd be good. But the last thing I would do is I would check on my calculator, all right? So with this TI-30XS thing that we got, uh, the calculator, the Casios may work a little bit different, but for, uh, for the TIs like the one I'm showing here, what I would do is I would type it in as a fraction, 13, oh, whoops. Let's see, let's, let's, let's type the decimal in zero, whoops, 0 0.0065. That's my calculator showing the same decimal that we started with. Now, if I wanted to change this to a fraction, I'm looking for this F arrow arrow D button. That's, that means that it's telling you I can convert fractions to decimals or the other way around, I can convert decimals to fractions. That's what the calculator says there. So to access it, I have to push the second button and then the table button. Now we see the fraction to decimal um, conversion statement is on the calculator. I just push enter. Oh, what the heck? It was That was supposed to work. Since it's not working on my TI-30XS, what I could do is I could type the fraction in, right? 13... Uh, over 2,000 and just kind of check my work this way. So since we found the answer, we could type that in and then it comes out as the same decimal. For for the Casios, you may be looking for a button like this one. I think it looks like this. Uh, I think that, I, I think it stands for standard to decimal or decimal to standard, but um, Again, you can find out on your own. I, I think it's that button that you'd be looking for.